Thank you to Cricut for teaming up with me on today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are moving on to episode two in my whole house decluttering series. Today we are tackling my hall closet upstairs. It is a large closet and it is a mess. I have not actually done anything to this really since the last time I shared this on my channel, probably like two years ago. So at this point, it's just looking pretty rough. I'm gonna turn you guys around and show you exactly what we are going to be starting with but I am going to be taking everything out, decluttering it, and then I actually got some new bins, so I'm going to be putting some new bins in there. I'm also gonna be using my Cricut Maker to label everything and just get everything looking really nice and organized. I am so excited for this. I have this amazing vision in my mind of how I think it's gonna turn out, and I just pray and hope that it actually is going to turn out as nice as I think. But without further ado, let me turn you around and show you what we got going on, and then we will jump on into it. I wanna hear you say it. So my plan of attack for this particular space is to actually pull every single thing out of the hall closet and move it into a separate area. So I am just moving it right next door into our guest bedroom. I feel like this will be the best way to kind of organize everything. I am not taking everything out of the bins. I'm trying to keep things as organized as I can, even though in a minute you'll get to see exactly how chaotic it gets to be in the other room. But this will just kind of give me space to organize everything and actually go through everything and be able to get everything to cluttered and just decide exactly what we are wanting to keep, what we are wanting to donate, and then anything that needs to get tossed. But as I've shared in other decluttering videos, I typically don't like to take every single thing out of a space all at once because it does kind of overwhelm me. But because this is a much smaller area, I do just feel like that is going to be the most beneficial to me. But I will be sharing a little bit more about my process and why I'm doing it this way a little bit later on because I'm actually going to be doing things in a little bit different order than I typically do. I'm going to be pulling everything out and then setting up some of my organization system and then going back through and actually decluttering everything because since I am going to be dealing with a lot of really small items, that way it will just kind of give me a place to put everything that I'm deciding to keep without it feeling super overwhelming and not just having a pile of things that I'm keeping and a pile of things that I'm decluttering. So once I got everything taken out of the closet, I am just going through and actually kind of cleaning everything up in here. It's not often that I have this whole closet emptied out and typically I don't go through in like deep clean areas like this that are totally full. And so while I do have it completely emptied out, I'm just going to be wiping down all of the shelves really nicely and then also doing a really good vacuum on the floor. I feel like it would be something so incredible if I could actually start cleaning out my closets on a more regular basis as opposed to only once a year. So when I actually go back through and kind of reorganize things and declutter the spaces, 
but it's just one of those things that kind of gets pushed further and further down your list. I know you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And I just have to accept that deep cleaning my closet is really only going to happen when I'm actually focusing on it on days like today. I'm literally stepping through this minefield of stuff in here. I just moved everything, oh my gosh. I just moved everything from our hall closet into the guest room. The last time I did this, I actually did this all in the hallway. And although it worked, it was a big mistake because it made everything way more difficult. So this way I figured I would just move everything into here and then it would give me a little bit more space to work with everything. So before we start decluttering everything because that is honestly, this is just very overwhelming to me right now. I want to get rid of like most of this stuff. It's ridiculous. I feel like when you have the space, a lot of times you just fill it. And that's totally what this hall closet has been for us. So before we get into that, I actually want to lay out the bins and probably even do some of the labels because I already know basically everything that I want to store in here. And anything that is in there that I'm not even realizing, I will have some extra space that I can add more later, but um, I just kind of want to get the organization done first and that way as I'm decluttering I can start organizing everything in here and I think it'll be good. I think that will keep my my little anxiety on this a little bit lower just making sure that everything that I am decluttering will have a place to go. I'm also going to have a big cardboard box that will be ready for me to go ahead and donate everything into um, and then everything else will already have a spot. So let's go ahead and start bringing in the bins. So of course I am on a budget for this space and so I wanted to make sure that the new items that I got were pretty budget friendly. So I ended up finding all of these bins at Sam's Club. They were on a sale in a bundle of two and so it ended up being about $5 a piece I believe. And then I also picked up these turntables or Lazy Susans, whatever you call them, over on Amazon. And then the little chalkboards are actually from the Target Dollar Spot. I got them a long time ago but they are definitely a really good deal. And then of course I will be making the labels myself with my cricket machine. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine. Give me, give me them good times, good times. Nothing, nothing but good vibes, good vibes. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine. So here I am just starting out by sorting all the different bins and the turntables and just kind of getting an idea of exactly how I'm going to set up my hall closet. Now this is not permanent at all. It's something that can totally be changed up as I start filling them up and seeing what is going to work. But for me, it really helps to do this in the beginning and that way I have a good idea of how my space is going to turn out and also what items I'm really going to have room to keep and what items I should really think about donating. The next thing I'm doing is just writing down what exactly I plan to store in each bin. Now because this space was organized, granted quite a while ago and that has kind of gone out the window, but because it was pre-organized, I did kind of have a good idea of what exactly I wanted to keep in this closet and so that really helped me out in this way. But I am just making a list and writing down what I will plan to store in each bin and then I'm also moving into the guest room and just kind of taking inventory of what things I have and make sure that I'm going to be making room for everything that I want to store in that hall closet. And then once I get my list all written out, I will be ready to start making my labels. Nothing. 
Finally, it is time to make the labels, which has been the thing I've been most excited about in this whole project. And I am so excited to be teaming up with Cricut for today's video. I've been familiar with Cricut for the past several years, and I have seen so many amazing projects that you can make with a Cricut machine. So being able to finally use one for this space was a lot of fun. I do have to say, when I first got my machine, I felt a little intimidated just thinking it would be really hard to figure out exactly how everything works, but once I got started, I followed the easy setup instructions and it was super simple, which made me really happy since I am definitely not the most tech savvy person ever. So the machine that I have is the Cricut Explore Air 2 and it has been amazing to use. So to start out with making my labels, I just went into the Cricut design space and started writing out the different labels that I had written down that I needed for our closet and then I picked out the font that I like the best and I love how customizable everything is. There are tons of fonts to choose from right on the app and then you can even customize the fonts from there. Like for example, I stretched mine a little bit taller just to get the look I was going for. And then once I got all of my labels designed, I got my vinyl all prepped and loaded in and clicked create. Getting the vinyl cut did not take long at all, then I just removed the excess vinyl, added the transfer tape, and I was ready to add them into my little chalkboards to make my own custom labels. Since having the Cricut machine, I have been having a lot of fun just kind of trying out new things, and I'm definitely expecting to start DIYing some home decor pieces and signs and all that good stuff with it in the future. It has been super impressive because the Cricut Explore Air 2, which is the machine that I have, cuts tons and tons of materials like vinyl, iron-on paper, fabric, canvas, the list goes on and on, and the variety of projects you're able to make with it is limitless. You can customize cups, make signs, and home decor, handmade cards, t-shirt, iron-ons, labels like I made today, just so, so many things. And for me, especially when I'm in this decluttering stage, I really wanna make sure that the things that I'm bringing into my home are really useful and also versatile, and the Cricut machine is definitely both of those things. Another thing that I definitely wanted to point out is just how easy it is to get started. Like I said, I was a little bit worried at first about it being too confusing, but it totally wasn't at all. It's been super user-friendly, and they have a lot of tools and videos on their website too, and the Cricut design space has been amazing. It's available both on mobile for on the go, or in your desktop as well. They also have tons and tons of ready to go projects set up and available if you want to either make something really simple and quick, or if you're not super creative in designing your own stuff and just kind of want something pre-set up. So here you can kind of see how the labels turned out and I cannot wait to make more for other areas of our home, which you will probably be seeing in future videos. But if you have been interested in getting a Cricut machine for yourself, I will leave a link down below for you to check it out. They have lots and lots of different machines and options kind of depending on your needs, but I can definitely recommend the one I have. It is super versatile and can do just about anything that you can come up with. Also, if you guys have ever tried a Cricut or if you have one, let me know in the comments what are your favorite things to make with it. And if you're following me over on your socials, tag me with different projects you've made. I would love to get a few more ideas and just kind of like let my creativity go with this one. It has just been so much fun and I cannot wait to create even more stuff with it. So here I am just starting to go through each bin. Like I had said, I just actually put everything into our guest bedroom and that way it just gave me a little bit more space as opposed to just going through everything in our closet. And also like you saw me just do, I went ahead and set up kind of like the organizing system that I'm going to have in place and that helped so, so much in this big massive project because that way as I was decluttering, I was able to organize at the same time and I feel like it really helped keep the overwhelm to a minimum, which was super helpful for me. I know sometimes decluttering can be really stressful and definitely overwhelming. And so anytime I find something that really works to help minimize that is definitely a win in my book.
So something that I really wanted to point out here as you're seeing me organize each bin is that you can actually put a bin inside of another bin. So here I kind of have like these larger bins for more generalized things. For example, I will have like a teeth and razors bin, but then inside of that bin, I'm going to have a few smaller bins and that way I can really kind of organize everything a little bit better and kind of be a little bit more specific and having everything a little bit more compartmentalized and easier to grab when I need them. So whenever I share these decluttering videos, I don't always go through like each individual item just because I feel like the process of why I'm keeping each individual item will kind of be a little bit redundant. I feel like I'll just talk about the same type of thing all the time. But for me, basically my biggest rule is if I never grab for it, I'm not keeping it. And then I just make sure that I donate anything that I can and only keep what we really are truly going to use. But I will say, especially in this closet, for example, I do have a lot of overflow. So we definitely have a lot more than we technically need at this moment. But when Kyle and I first got married, I actually used to coupon all the time. Like I just loved it. And I actually had the time because at the first we didn't have any kids or anything. And so I just kind of had a little bit more time to dedicate to that. And so I really kind of got in the habit of being able to just purchase things at a lower price through the couponing. And then that way, anytime we needed something, I pretty much had it on hand because I was all stocked up. Now at this point, I am definitely a lot busier than I used to be. And I don't feel like I really have the time or the capacity to coupon, but I do still try to buy things on sale and I try to buy things in bulk. And so for that reason, that's kind of why we have a lot of overstock here. And while I do totally think that's amazing when you're able to do that, I'm really thankful that we have been able to do that. That. but also you really do need to maintain your spaces and you really have to organize if you're going to kind of stock up like that because if you don't then you end up just kind of having a lot of bulk and then you don't even realize you have it or you can't find what you need and then you end up having to run out and buy something at full price anyway so if you are going to kind of do how we do and try to stock up then go ahead and make sure that you are putting in the time and the effort into organizing your space. And that way you're really able to actually utilize the stock up that you have and make sure that everything is not buried on everything else. And that way you're really able to use your backup stock to your benefit. All right, I am slowly making my way through. I've actually made a lot of progress, even though it doesn't really seem like it, but all of these have actually been gone through. These are things that just need to go somewhere else in the house. These are things that I'm going to see if maybe like my sisters want. This goes in the hall closet. That is a bin for the hall closet. That one goes in the hall closet. Those are light bulbs, so I need to ask Kyle what he wants. I have a ton of cleaning supplies that I need to go through. And then I also have the bulk of the rest of my thing is mostly like kids crafts and things like that. So I think instead of just doing what I've been doing in here, which has worked out pretty well, I think I'm actually going to move back into the hall closet and then just basically carry a bin into there and then sort it in there and then anything that doesn't get sorted into the hall closet I will either donate or if it's something that expired or something I can't donate then I will go ahead and throw that away. But I think that that might be the best plan of attack for the rest of this stuff or at least the next good bit of it. So let's move back into the hall closet. So anytime you have a closet with a corner in it, like this closet or like our pantry, if you've seen any of my pantry makeover videos, I have like a love hate with corners because you're definitely getting a lot of extra space that way, but you also are kind of getting a little bit tricky space. If you do not utilize it well, it really can be a big waste of space. And so one of my biggest tips for corner closets are to grab some oversized turntables or lazy Susans, just kind of measure your shelf and see what size you need to pick up. These ones right here are actually eight 
18 inch lazy susans and they fit the space incredible that way i'm able to really utilize that space i can just turn the lazy susan when i need to get something from the back and every inch of that space is really being well utilized so definitely make sure to pick up lazy susans you can get them from all over you can get them from target walmart amazon really you can kind of find them anywhere but they are going to be your best friend anytime you have a corner closet or a corner cabinet or really anything like that they are just going to help you out so much in those spaces So one thing that I really love about the bin system is that it's not permanent and also it can be totally customizable. So I am able to kind of change out what I have in the bins, but I'm also able to easily change out where I place the bins. So if I find that I'm really not using a certain one, I can just move it to a higher shelf and move the one that I'm grabbing to more often down to a lower shelf, just a little bit more convenient. But that is one of my next tips is really be mindful of what level you are storing your bins at. So for example, for us, because our kids are a little bit older, we are putting the kid items a little bit lower for them because I really don't mind if they get into those bins. A lot of times our youngest son, Noah, he will just come grab the Play-Doh bin and start playing with it on the counter because I like to keep it a little bit lower for him. Whereas if I put it way up high, I would have to run up the stairs and grab it for him every single time he wanted to play Play-Doh. And then he's also able to clean up his mess and put that away himself. And then on the other hand, if there's something that I am either never grabbing in or like something that I'm not really grabbing often, for example, like our paper towels, I'm able to kind of put that up a little bit higher. It's something that our kids don't really need to get into and it's something I don't really need to access very often. And so that can go a little bit higher or also if you have like medicine, things like that, that's great to store up a little bit higher. So you can really kind of utilize that space in different ways. But like I said, bins are perfect because they are really easy to kind of move around. So you can kind of just play around with it and see what's going to work best for your own family. Also, I just wanted to say something. I feel so guilty sometimes about getting rid of things because I feel like I spent money on them or I just feel like, wow, I really wanted to use this and we just never did. And so I don't know about you guys, but I totally get that guilt sometimes when I'm decluttering because I just feel like, oh my gosh, this was so wasteful to have all these items and I never actually used them. I think a lot of times in the past I have been a sucker for sales. And so if I find certain things on a really good deal, I will just pick them up thinking, yeah, we'll definitely use that. And we totally don't because real life happens. But really, I would just tell you, do not let that guilt set in because you can't change the past but all you can do is do your best going forward so once I see all of the things that we had that I never used now I know when I go into the store don't just buy something because it's on a good sale or really make sure that what I'm buying is very intentional and I'm not just purchasing things just to buy them or whatever the case may be but I will say in the end if you end up feeling that guilt and then you keep extra things because of it you are going to end up probably not using those things still except now you're going to still have that clutter and so it's still going to be stealing time and space from you and it's also probably going to cause you to not use the other things as much as you would like because they are going to be buried under the things that you really don't use so anyway I feel like I'm just talking and talking so I hope everything is making sense but really the bottom line is just don't feel guilt when you're decluttering just know that you are passing it on to a home that will actually appreciate it and be able to use it and just know that you can learn from this and be more intentional with what you are actually bringing into your home in the future So just like I shared in episode one of my whole house decluttering series, I love to leave extra room and extra space in the bins and in the shelves that I'm organizing and decluttering. I'm not going to share all the tips that I shared in that video because there were honestly a lot and we would be here all day if I did that. But I did just want to touch on this one again and just remind you that you really don't need to fill all of the space. Having extra space in bins or having extra space left on shelves is actually a great thing because it really just kind of leaves room for life to happen because it most definitely will. You will add more things, you will take away things things and it's just perfect to be able to have a little bit of that excess space for life. I walk this road, it takes me home 
So now that I have everything decluttered and everything reorganized back into my new bins, I am just starting to actually attach the little chalkboard labels that I made onto each of the bins. Now I wasn't totally sure exactly how I was going to do this, but in the end I ended up going for the hot glue gun option and it worked out really, really well. And honestly, anytime you need to attach something, I feel like the hot glue gun is a great option. It's obviously very cheap and affordable to do. It also is very easy. And one of the things that I love the most is it's not really permanent. Like if I want to take these off of the bins one day and use them in a different area, I can pretty easily just pop them off and then take the hot glue off and they'll be basically good is new so I love that it's not really like destroying the bins I'm not poking holes or anything I am just hot gluing it and they are on there really well until I don't want them to be so anyway that's what I ended up doing and it worked out really really well All right, finally we are finished. Oh my gosh, it looks better than I imagined. So here are all the other bins. I think I might just pass these ones along because I've had a lot of these for several years and I just don't think I have a space that I'm planning on using them. So I might go ahead and donate those. And then I also have this little package right here is actually gonna be for some of my sisters. And then these are all the things that I'm donating. So it's a big, big box from Lowe's and it's overflowing. So that is everything that I'm going to be donating. And now I'm gonna turn you guys around and show you the reveal. I'm excited, this looks so good. So that is everything for today's video. I am so, so in love with how everything turned out in this closet. I've honestly just been leaving the door open for a few days. That way I can walk past it and just see the amazingness that it is. Normally we always have that door closed because obviously it was a hot mess. It just feels so much better and we've all been accessing that closet so much more often because we know that everything has a home, everything has a space that it's supposed to be in and it has just been a huge blessing in our home to have this space nice and organized again. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely stay tuned for episode number three. I'm honestly not entirely sure if it's going to be my bathroom or I have a few other closets that are kind of a mess like this. Honestly, they might even be worse than this one. So let me know in the comments if you would rather see a bathroom declutter for episode three or if you would rather see another closet. They are both in dire need and all of them will be very satisfying. So we have a lot more episodes to come, so definitely stay tuned for that. Also, don't forget to check out my link for the Cricut down below. If you have been interested in the Cricut machines, you will definitely not regret it. They are incredible. I am absolutely a huge Cricut fan at this point and just know what that is going to be in my future for a long, long time. So I will leave that link down below for you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you are not already, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.